Okay, let's do in class nine, number one. It says let R be the region bounded by x minus two squared over four plus y plus one squared over nine equals one, y greater than or equal to negative one, and x greater than or equal to two. So we define this double integral over this region. This is the same question we did in, in class number eight. Uh, so I've graphed, I've graphed a region over here. We found in, in class eight, the answer to this was 24 over five and we divided it up, I think we did it two ways, one going that way, one going that way. Here we're going to do the same question, but we're going to uh, change variables to a simple region. So, note here. So we can write, say, x minus 2 over 2 squared. I can write this first guy up here as x minus 2 over 2 squared, and I can write the second one here as y plus 1 over 3 squared. So it equals 1, but say I let it equal r, and uh, r with r going from uh, 0 to 1. Well, if r was 1, you'd be right on this, this guy here. That's r is 1. beyond the ellipse here. If R was a half, uh, so it'd be another ellipse, but it'd be a different uh, size. It'd be, be a, probably be halfway in there, so it'd be like this. So that'd be R is one half. And if R is zero, you'd be just right there, because that was zero on that side. Only way to be true is if you're at two negative one, so I put you right there. So any point in the in this region, uh, you can think of it as uh, it's going to be on some ellipse of a, a certain radius. Think of it as like the radius of the ellipse if you want. Okay, so we're going to make a substitution now. So we're going to say let x minus two over 2 equal r cosine and y plus 1 over 3 equal r sine. Okay, then multiplying both sides by 2 here, I'd have then x minus 2 equals 2r cosine theta. Multiplying this guy by 3, I'd have y plus 1 equals 3r sine theta. So then solving these uh, for x and for y, so x would equal 2r cosine theta and y would equal 3r sine theta minus 1. Okay. Let me erase a few things here. Okay, so I claim our s will look like this. So the theta will go from 0 to pi over 2, r will go from 0 to 1. The theta won't go to 2 pi because if it went to 2 pi, it would go around the whole ellipse. But it's just one fourth of the ellipse. This is one fourth of the ellipse right here. Right here. One fourth of the ellipse. Uh, so that would mean from zero to pi over two. So for example, if I went along this line here, that's when r is one. So say I went along it like that. And I mapped it under t, it would go to this guy here. Okay, and if I pick, say, uh, another one in the middle here, which is the other way. So that guy right there, that would correspond to something like that. And then going along the one right here, that would just correspond to that point right there. So this would be your T mapping. So it mapped this uh, rectangle into our region R. So this is our S over here. 
OK, so now let's do the change of variables. So here's our change of variables formula. It says we're trying to integrate over the region R up here. Here is our function. So change of variables would say this. I can integrate over S, F of T of R theta times Jacobian dr d theta. OK, let's figure out the Jacobian guy right now. Oh, so I've written out my Jacobian here. So here, uh, the r is taking the place of the u, and the theta is taking the place of the v in the change of variables guy. Uh, so this is our x up here. This is our y. So the derivative uh, of x with respect to r, so it's going to be just 2 cosine theta. Derivative of x with respect to theta, derivative of cosine uh, is minus sine, so it'll be minus 2r sine theta. Then it'll be derivative of y with respect to r, so it'll be 3 sine. And then derivative of y with respect to theta, it'll be 3r cosine. Okay, then I'm going to go. Then I'm going to go this times this. It's going to be 6r cosine squared. And this times that with a minus, but there's all, it's going to be a second minus, will be a plus. So it'll be 6r sine squared. I can pull the 6r out. So pulling the 6r out then, uh, this will be cosine squared plus sine squared, which is 1. So this become then 6r. I'm taking the absolute value of this, but r is positive, so it's going to be 6r. So we know then uh, the Jacobian guy now is 6r, so this is 6r. Okay, so let's keep going. Let me erase now. Let's me, let me erase this Jacobian guy now. Okay, now let's compute. Uh, well, we can do our s, I guess. Uh, if I'm doing dr first, r is going to go from 0 to 1, so it'll be 0 to 1 here. And the theta goes from 0 to pi over 2. So let's figure out f of t of r theta. So f of t of r theta. So up here, that's my x, that's my y. Here's my f over here. So I'm going to go x minus 2. So when I take 2 away from that, the, two will, the minus 2 and plus 2 will cancel. So it's just going to be then 2r cosine squared. And then a y plus 1. So the plus 1 and minus 1 will cancel. It will become then so put that in place of y. So it'll be then 3r sine theta. OK, so we're going to put this now in place of this guy up here. Then we have everything we need on this side. We can just integrate. So let me erase a few things and keep going. So putting everything together, uh, this is what we have. So that's our Jacobian. That's our f of t of r theta, and that's this is our s region here. Okay, so let's start uh, simplifying this now. So we know this should be the same answers we got from in class in class uh, number eight, which is twenty-four over two. So let's see if we get that here. So squaring this guy, it'll be four r squared cosine squared times 3r sine theta times 6r dr d theta. So that would be 4 times 3, 12 times 6, uh, 72. So that would be, let's pull that 72 out in front of the integral. It'll be 0 to pi over 2. Zero to one, it'll be uh, r cubed, 
and then it would be cosine squared sine then dr d theta okay so let's keep going so we're integrating with respect to r so it'll be then 0 to pi over 2 and so integrating respect to r here it'll be r to the fourth oh sorry miss i lost my 72 72 in front there, uh, r to the fourth over four cosine squared sine theta evaluated at zero and one d theta. Okay, so I'm going to put one in place of r and zero in place of r. Oh, sorry, I just noticed something. Uh, that's r squared, third, fourth, it should be r to the fourth here, I messed up. So it should be actually r to the fifth then, over five. Okay, so putting one in there will be 72. Uh, so putting one there will be just one fifth. I can pull it outside, so I'll put it outside with 72 there. Then it'll be still integral zero to pi over two. cosine squared cosine squared sine theta d theta okay now I'm going to make a u substitution I'm going to say let uh, u equal cosine theta so then then du d theta will be minus sine. So then uh, du equal minus sine d theta dividing by, uh, so solving for d theta, or multiplying both sides by minus one maybe. You can say that minus du equals sine d theta, which I have right here. That's going to be my du then. So then I uh, keep going here. So this will be then 72 over 5 integral u of 0 u of pi over 2 then the co uh, cosine is u, so be u squared now the sine d theta we just said was a uh, negative du okay so let's see so u of zero well u is cosine so be cosine of zero which would be one and uh, u of pi over two would be cosine of pi over two which would be zero so i could switch around these uh limits here it would introduce a minus sign and would cancel with that one so we left with then 72 over 5 integral 0 to 1 u squared du. Okay, so let me get rid of this stuff here. Okay, so integrating this then be 72 over 5 u cubed over 3 evaluated at zero and one. So that'll be then 72, actually, sorry, three into 70, 72 goes 24. Putting one here, it'll be just become 24 over five. And that was the same answer we got from in class eight. Okay, so we're done.